Good evening. What's going on there, guys? It is the Earthmaster here on this Friday evening, uh, June 3rd, 2022 date. It's about 7.03 p.m. California time. The latest quake shows a 4.0 earthquake in the area of the Middle East. It looks like right around Iran. Showing some uh, movement kicking up there over the last 24 hours. Also notice a little bit of swarming going on down here in the gulf of california seeing quite a bit of forest kick up here along this plate boundary of the north american and pacific plate boundary interaction there quite a few forests kicking off uh, basically within the last 12 hours or so let's go ahead and check out the latest movement here on the usgs map here showing some of that some of that activity into the gulf of california got a couple forests kicking off here down uh, in this region EMSC model showing a couple more uh, This is the latest EMSC model showing at least four uh, Four pointers down there in the Gulf of California USGS right now only showing two um, but uh, There's definitely some activity kicking up here along this plate boundary which could affect uh, the areas north here around the Southern California region we have seen a little bit of oddball earthquake activity and some enhanced earthquake movement in the southern california region so it might be an area to watch pretty closely as this activity possibly could um, trigger something up north here into the southern california region we did have a little bit of activity uh, into the region of the san andreas fault here just off to the east if you remember over the last seven days, we've been kind of watching a little bit of swarming going towards the southern end of the San Andreas Fault itself. Today, uh, one earthquake just off it. Looks like it's on the Hidden Valley Fault, uh, Hidden Springs Fault system, uh, which is just to the east. Very, just, I mean, a very short area to the east of the San Andreas Fault zone itself. I can't find a whole lot of info on the Hidden Springs Fault. Uh, a little bit of uncertainty on it. It's only a very short 20 kilometer length uh, fault system. Not a whole lot of information when it comes to historical um, historical data. Uh, but it is kind of right there. Like I said, right, right on the North American side of the plate boundary. And uh, just an area to watch pretty closely as we've been seeing a little bit of swarming and migrational movement towards that southern segment that we, we got to watch pretty closely. Let me tell you. Uh, down here in the Southern Cal area outside of Warner Springs, of course, early this morning around 3 o'clock when I was up, I couldn't sleep from about 3 a.m. to about 5.30 a.m. Of course, today's a pretty important day for me. Uh, not too many folks know, but my, my mom passed away last year. So it's a one-year anniversary for that. Uh, so I think a whole lot on my mind and uh, kind of why I couldn't sleep all night. But uh, I was up for that 3.6 earthquake around 3 something in the morning. And it uh, looks like they've been having a little bit of swarming since then. Aftershock sequence uh, sequences spread out over about a mile or so uh, in this general area. It is just off of the Elsinore fault system. There's a couple different segments that run through this area. Um, up north, not a whole lot uh, of movement. Some outside of the Manhattan Beach area. A 2.5 notice the depth there of the earthquakes looks like uh, about uh, 11 kilometers or, or so we have been seeing some deeper earthquake movement within this area uh, sand or the uh, Ridgecrest area within the last hour Trona California 1.1 just north of the Garlock fault structure uh, the eastern part of the Sierra Nevada up here looks pretty quiet for now folks there's not a whole lot going on got one earthquake here around the uh, Los Banos area, Los Banos, California, 1.4 at 4.4 kilometers into this area called the, uh, wow, I'm not even going to attempt it because Missy Mimi's is not here. <laughs> I'll let you guys be the judge of pronouncing that, um, that little fault system there. It's uh, along the coast range here, Diab Diablo range, a whole lot of dynamics here along the west coast. Uh, so uh, who knows what fault system fault system it's on um looking up north north of the bay there's not a whole lot going on here we got one query blast going on out here um 
in the mountain ranges there. It looks like near Sulphur Springs Valley. Um, a 1.0 registered up there on the seismograph. Looks like it's outside of the, uh, I don't know, it looks like some type of mining going on, some type of mining event going on in this area. And of course, humans and their explosives, right? Like to blow stuff up and try to dig into the earth uh, for uh, who knows what, precious, precious metals or, um, I don't know, not for sure what they're, um, what they're um, blasting down there, but uh, definitely reading up on the charts a little bit. Not a whole lot going on here through the Cobb Mountain region, folks. I think they've come to a stop here of uh, showing any, any type of activity. We'll get to that uh, in a later update video. One earthquake here around the Mendocino Triple Point Junction area, 2.1. 16 kilometers here, southeast, or uh, 16 kilometers down into the subduction zone. This is, sits about, um, oh, I don't know, about 20 miles or so southwest of the Eureka area. Not a whole lot going on through Oregon or Washington. A couple of small earthquakes around Mount Rainier being reported. And one earthquake here around Seattle. Near Redmond, 1.4 at 3.5 kilometers. Uh, as we look up into Montana through Yellowstone, still getting some earthquake activity here around Salt Lake City area. This is uh, some aftershock sequences following the... Uh, uh, the larger earthquake activity, I think it was back in 2019. I can't remember the exact date, but I know they had a five-pointer. Maybe even a low grade six in this area. I can't quite remember. We had a whole lot of earthquakes uh, taking place around that time. But a little bit of movement around the great Salt Lake City area. And also here around Cedar, Utah. This area sees a little bit of swarming on occasion. It looks like it's starting to pick up a little bit today. A couple earthquakes there around the Sunnyside, Utah area at some very, very shallow depths there. Looking at satellite view. Nothing but mountains out there in the region. Uh, let's see what else we got throughout the uh, Texas area. A couple earthquakes scattered out and about there in the western Texas. And actually around the uh, Quinton, Oklahoma area. A couple earthquakes out there as well. I think the main topic right now we need to watch here is the uh, area around the North American Plate and the Pacific Plate boundary. Obviously showing some fours up and down the board. There's a couple more up to the north that USGS is not showing. Something to watch pretty closely. Uh, and of course, if you kind of put all this together, we've seen some movement up and down the board. Um, and on these adjacent plates here, got uh, some movement off the coast of Guatemala. It kicked up earlier. That was a uh, 4.7 there. Earlier this afternoon, also off the coast of the uh, Nica Nicaragua area, seen a 4.4 at 37 kilometers. And activity stretching down from Ecuador, uh, Ecuador down into the Peru-Chile Trench. It's a movement north of the Santiago-Chile area with a 4.4. So a little heightened activity over the last 24 hours. Not a whole lot of major large-scale movement around the Puerto Rico area. We did see a 3.7 north of the Dominican Republic. Uh, Punta, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic area, 30 kilometers there, pretty close here to the, the uh, Puerto Rico Trench, right on the western edge there at 30 kilometers. Um, not a whole lot of renewed activity throughout the uh, Fiji Islands area or the um, Indonesia area, only a couple small earthquakes and those are some older earthquake movements. Uh, from this morning taking place up here outside of Taiwan, north of Japan. Uh, this activity from earlier this morning as well. There's not uh, not a whole lot of renewed activity along this portion of the plate, but we have seen definitely an increase in activity much, much further west here uh, into the area around Iran. We've seen a couple fours kicking up here outside of Kuwait and a 4.4 into the Iran territories up here. Uh, all striking within the last hour subsequently, so got to watch this region pretty closely. They do get some rather large earthquakes, some devastating earthquakes in this area. Uh, it's been a little while, so, you know, um, considering that we're kind of, I think we're somewhat locked over here in this region. Uh, I know we're building up pressure, but I think with the general movement here of the plates and the locked area over here, I think this is a prime example 
of uh, the plate pressure and gradients here in this region. Not a whole lot of activity here recently. Of course, this morning we've seen some activity, but here uh, recently within this afternoon time frame, most of the activity in this area of the world uh, around the Middle East. So watching that pretty closely. Also outside of Turkey and into the area of the uh, Greece region, seeing a 4.9 as well. Atlantic Ocean, all pretty quiet right now. Right now, I should say. Uh, the trimmer map. Uh, wow, look at that. Pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on. 47 trimmers. It's a little number, right? Compared to what we've seen over the last couple weeks or so, last month. Not a big deal. 47 epicenters of trimmer, but... Uh, you know, still got to watch that pretty closely. Most of it looks like it's outside of Seattle. That could be, uh, let me bounce over here to this USGS map again here. Stand by for one second. Could be uh, explaining some of the activity we're seeing here into the Cascades and outside of the Seattle area. Somewhat deep, 11 kilometers for the majority of those earthquakes there into the uh, Washington region. Looking at volcanic seismicity map here around Mount St. Helens. We'll go ahead and zoom into our normal station here that we kind of monitor there for a microquake earthquake activity. And well, whoa, 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 what do we got going on guys? Don't do that to me. Don't hide stuff from me. Don't do that. I'm gonna take that as a mistake. Oh, image not found. And this is a station that we normally monitor every single day, but it's gone offline. What is going on here? Let's go ahead and check out Rembrandt, Mount St. Helens, but it's not the station that I normally monitor for. Wow, even they are offline. Okay, guys, come on. Come on, USGS, PNSN. Okay, we'll give them a day. We'll give them a day. Maybe maybe they're working on some stuff. It's Friday. Maybe uh, they're putting some new equipment in over the weekend. Let's check out the previous UTC time and see if, see if we got some activity kicking up here. This is going to be the afternoon, early morning time frame for us. Um, yeah. Looks like it goes until about 2320 uh, UTC time, which was about... Oh man, three hours ago. So we're lacking three hours of data on the new UTC time date. We're looking at seismic activity. Yeah, there's definitely some microquakes still at the vicinity of Mount St. Helens there at the dome station. We'll keep checking back there for the, uh, the uh, most recent graph. Earthquakes Canada as we zoom in here to the area of, uh, well, there's not a whole lot going on in the western portion of Canada. It looks like outside of the, let's see where we're at, Quebec area, a 2.2 kicking off earlier. Well, this was a couple days ago. Kind of a little late on the reporting. Looks like uh, 12 kilometers there for that 2.2 a couple days ago. Yellowstone National Park. There's not a whole lot going on here, folks. I know we got some odd readings showing up here throughout the park, but please don't let this scare you. Don't let this uh, intimidate anyone. And don't believe the fear mongers in uh, what's going on here because it's just some errors going on or some wind events going on. I know we got a major, major low pressure system coming in here. Let me bring it up here uh, into the area and rain rain for us here in northern california at this time of year is abnormal we got a, a pretty strong low pressure system bringing in uh, a couple series of rain events tonight here around where i live in chico knows the south flow uh, and of course the moisture offshore here are going to bring us probably yeah i don't know maybe maybe at the most half an inch of rain in this area of northern california but uh, looking up here around the wash or the uh, Yellowstone area, I know it's cold. There's definitely some colder temperatures going on. Far as any wind events go, it doesn't look 
look like there's a whole lot going on. But uh, rest assured that those are not any type of earthquake events. Definitely looks weather related. As uh, far as general earthquake activity within the vicinity of Yellowstone, uh, there's not a whole lot going on at all. No major swarmings, no major microquake swarm at all to note here at the area uh, within this region. So uh, what is this here? Let's see what we got. This is around the Hebgen Lake area. Notice the squiggly lines all over the place. Hebgen Lake. What do we got going on here around Hebgen Lake area? Well, not a whole lot of wind. Let's see what we got for rain. Uh, any thunderstorms going on up there? Looks like there's thunderstorms within the vicinity as uh, far as the Cape values go. Uh, rain accumulation. Looks like there is rain up around the West Yellowstone area. But uh, definitely think that's some, some type of... Uh, outside interference or weather related showing up around the Hebgen Lake region for now so uh, solar weather activity let's go ahead and check this out here real quick it will bounce out of here and uh, still not a whole lot going on here folks unfortunately this is a little depressing uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, solar weather activity sunspots are now kind of heading off towards the western limb of the Sun and behind it, there's not a whole lot. A lot of openness going on on the sun's surface. Looking at the uh, magnetosphere imagery here, a couple may, maybe a couple developments around the bend, but man, there's there's not a whole lot at all. Nada. Zip zero is the word. Coronal holes, nothing facing the Earth as well. This <laughs> looks like we're in a maximum solar minimum. That kind of makes sense, right? Into a to a heightened period of solar minimum during the maximum maybe i don't think uh i don't think it will last long i think we're gonna jump into some uh, uh some major sunspot activity here coming up real soon so just gotta sit tight be patient enjoy the show for sure uh looking at the raw index speeds have dropped down dramatically down to about 300 cams per second uh, for the solar wind that's pretty low extremely low uh, although the density is kind of amped up, the uh, BTBZ components have kind of adjusted to that lack of speed, opening up a little bit. Uh, temperature is down around the neutral area, uh, and no major uh, aurora forecasted uh, going on tonight. So, alrighty, guys, I'm going to bounce out of here, and uh, again, I hope everyone enjoys their Friday night. Uh, Kind of like I say, I'm just kind of dealing with my own issues right now with uh, you know yearly anniversary of the passing of well the most important person in my life, my mom. I think a lot of people look up to her mom as the uh, you know that that one person that we can always count on when and when they're not here, you know you, you go into a, a a different phase, a different set of mind. So uh, I turn off that uh, earthquake uh, program. Either way, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. I'm going to get out there and uh, attend to the uh, barbecue and the dinner. We will chat at you guys a little bit later on. Have a safe night, everyone. Peace out.